My name is Penny Pearson and I am a coordinator at OTAN for distance learning projects and it is with so much pride and excitement that I get to introduce our speakers today. I came up across this device about four or five years ago when I met Frank. Frank Martin is joining us today and he is the uh, Justice Education Coordinator for World Possible and he's going to be introducing you to the Rachel device but we're also I'm very pleased to be able to, to say that uh, Jeremy Schwartz, who is the executive director for World Possible, the entire organization, is also joining us today to help us with the Q&A session. And um, I think you're going to find this device can be an amazing resource for our adult education learners who are in those areas of our state that have very little to no internet access or even wireless access for a mobile phone. And it could be anywhere from way out in the boonie toolies to downtown metropolis somewhere where they do not have the necessary access they need to get to learning tools. So without any further ado, I want to introduce uh, Frank Martin. Frank, over to you, please. Okay, thank you. Yes, it is a Monday and I'd like to thank everyone today uh, for attending the uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Frank Martin. I met Penny around four years ago. Uh, it was in Long Beach and Jeremy Schwartz and I were presenting uh, information about Rachel and also endless computers. And we've come quite a long way since our time, uh, first kickstarting with pilots of the laptop. And now we're doing actually whole states with uh, some of the technology that's for offline. And I'll be presenting um, a number of uh, information on both hardware and software today. And so again, I'd like to say thank you for the OTAN group for inviting us and for Jeremy Schwartz, who's uh, also on the call today, um, providing some of his input and time uh, to our efforts here. So I want to start off with uh, the challenges that we've seen greatly by the COVID-19 crisis. And it's really brought attention to the need for offline resources. And probably as all of you already know and are aware of, a lot of communities do not have the ability to connect to the internet, nor do they have the ability to have enough offline resources. And so across the United States, probably well over a quarter, uh, individuals and families do not have access. And I wanted to demonstrate uh, that in a visual of showing the map uh, from the Census Bureau about some of the access areas. And so it is, depending where you live and what your resources are, a need to further your education and awareness. Um, today I want to bring forward a lot of information that is about World Possible's uh, Rachel device and also about connecting to Rachel. And I'll also be bringing you information about some of the content that is on Rachel. So today you'll be looking at both how to set up a Rachel, how to run a Rachel, but also where is the software that is within Rachel that gives us the use of offline uh, resources. So basically it's a real easy uh, device to power up. It's made by uh, originally Intel and then World Possible took a lead in getting it developed and brought into the United States for offline use. Uh, it actually sends out a wireless signal, sort of think of it as a private cloud signal, that people that have a laptop are able to connect to, or any device that has Wi-Fi can pick up a signal, and it picks up the signal, and then it allows the user to connect to the content that is, you know, all browsable. So, real possible captured a lot of content that were actually websites or shared content that they're able to, to browse uh, within the Rachel system that connects to any type of, uh, we prefer that as browser, Chrome is the one that we recommend. So you just turn it on, you are able to connect to 50 devices, and it has a range of 150 feet. And if you look up here, you see the Rachel 5G, that's what happens when you hit the power on button. You're able to identify Rachel uh, from your laptop and you just connect up to it. It's that easy. And that's one of the reasons we like the deployment. Um, 
for example, we've used this throughout the state of Oregon and we were able to deploy at all of our correctional facilities. You may be wondering, you know, I mentioned Rachel. Here is inside Rachel, when you look at all of the content, uh, you're able to see what we call is our uh, modules. And the modules are actual content brought to you via, you know, a download. And World Possible captures websites, as I said earlier, and also captures content that is provided to us. A lot of this is, again, open resources, open education resources. A lot of it is for shareable through Creative Commons. And we actually have, think of it sort of like a supermarket of content. And you're able to upload all different types of content, which is known as a module. And you can pick and you can choose what those are. And you're able to at least choose a language, uh, choose the type of areas of interest that you have all at once. Again, these are the modules and here you can see all the devices. And if you look at the top one, it says Rachel plus lesson planner. You can also create your own content. And in youth corrections, we use a lot of uh, treatment type of uh, content for anger management, uh, you know, grief and loss issues. We're able to upload the content. Um, recently, we worked with Washington State, and Washington State uh, said, hey, we'd love to do work with you. What about some content? And so we developed a lot of content for computer training. And I'll Frank, be showing there's a you. couple of questions in the Q&A that maybe I can address um, real quick, too, just to, to jump sure. in. This is Jeremy Schwartz. Hi, everyone. So just to be clear, this is not a hotspot when it, it looks like a hotspot and it creates a Wi-Fi signal like a hotspot, but instead of connecting to the internet, you are connecting to copies of websites which we have stored directly on Rachel. So there is no internet connection anywhere in this. We basically took a, a snapshot of the best educational content on the internet. We made a copy of that content, kind of like making a copy of a book. We make copies of websites. And then we put that copies of websites on Rachel. And then when a user connects to Rachel, they are browsing copies of websites. So we have Wikipedia on our device, but it's Wikipedia as of six months ago when we last made a copy of it. And so what this means is that anywhere you send this device, it's not going to connect to the internet. It doesn't use any bandwidth. There's no monthly subscription charges. You get this device and you have access to all of the websites we've made copies of and stored on the device, but there is no internet connectivity. So it's a very big difference than saying, oh, it's a hotspot that connects to a 3G or 4G signal. We work in places where there is no cellular signal. So Frank works in um, you know, prisons, but we have seven or eight other chapters around the world where there is no internet access anywhere. And so they get copies of educational websites and that's what's stored on here. And so the other question that I've seen is, is it specific to California? No, it can be used nationwide and actually it can be used all around the world. Um, again, is this a type of modem? No, all it is is a wireless signal which is connecting to the hard drive in Rachel. The hard drive is preloaded with content. How much does it cost? Um, so there's a version of Rachel Frank is talking about which has a battery inside it. That version is $500. There is a $160 version called Rachel Pie, which has less content, smaller storage drive, but for some of your remote learners could be very um, effective. And then you can also download this content onto a thumb drive and mail out the content. Um, sorry, there's so many Q and A's. Let me, maybe I can just- Oh, no, no it's, it's, no, it's excellent. I appreciate it. And, and I sometimes forget how technical or how I take for granted some of the technology that I've been using for so long. No, I sure. really appreciate so it. So a lot of the next um, content is, not only the next questions are about the content or the websites which are on Rachel. So World Possible as a nonprofit only makes copies of non-licensed content, content which does not have a copyright on it. So things like Rosetta Stone, Burlington English, Odysseyware, ACT, Virtual Job Shadow, all of that content has a copyright on it, which means you have to reach out to that person and say, can we install your website on a Rachel device? And they, uh, we've done this with a number of like Odysseyware and GED Academy, a lot of these groups that make these websites, 
can very easily install their website on Rachel if they allow it. But we as a nonprofit organization focused on free open educational resources, we don't have the authority to go out and make copies of these websites, but this hardware would allow those same providers to install their website on Rachel. So hopefully that helps answer a couple of those. How often are sites updated? Um, Steve asked this question pretty rarely. So when we make a copy of a website, the most frequent website we make um, updates to is Wikipedia. About once a year, we update Wikipedia. The rest of the content on Rachel is your basic STEM content, science, technology, engineering, math. And so a lot of that content doesn't update frequently. What we spend more of our time doing is finding new websites to add. So like the Khan Academy, we haven't updated in about three years because the videos that they're making now are more niche topics, but their core set of information hasn't changed in a long time. So we don't update sites all that often. Um, the updates, how do you do that? If you want to update the content on Rachel, you do have to find an internet connection and plug it into the internet. And then in the admin section of Rachel, it's like when you update apps on your phone, it'll say this is available for update and you just click the update button. Um, so is Rachel a storage device and how much storage can be stored? Yes, Rachel is a storage device. Rachel is also a web server. So it is like taking all of the internet, compressing it into a really small form factor, um, putting a $500 price tag on it and shipping it out. It has either 500 gigabytes of storage or a terabyte of storage. And that allows us to store about 70 websites on it at a time. So in total, we have about 160 websites that we make copies of. Any Rachel device can only store, and I'm just ballparking between 50 and 70, depending on how big the website is. And um, that, that set of content is usually dictated by when you order Rachel, you say, hey, this is going to the United States or to an adult education learner, and we will go through our list and curate the content for it. So if it is going to a health center in Uganda, it's a very different content list than if it's going to um, an adult education learner at an adult correctional facility. And we even do have a specific version of Rachel's content, which is just for correctional sites. Um, so for um, prisons and youth authorities and things like that, we don't distribute Wikipedia because it might have info on inmates or facilities or um, there's even like bomb making or ancient war tactics. So we're in a few hundred correctional facilities and that has caused us to create a set of censored content just for correctional facilities as well. All right, so I think that's all of the, the <laughs> someone wants a quote. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> um, we can send out quotes. You can also go to store.worldpossible.org. Um, we are in uh, quite a few facilities in California. I've seen some people joining the list and you may not already know, um, but we have a few of these uh, facilities that are already not only users of Rachel, um, someone from Saddleback College joined. Saddleback College actually donated one of our most used resources, which is a pre-algebra resource that one of the professors at Saddleback College created. And so what we hope to do is make this um, a, a facility that, that grows on itself. So if you have content that would be useful for more learners and you can contribute to this type of um, exercise, what we do is we can you know, continue to grow the base of content. So yeah, we have Saddleback. We, I have it in the presentation. We can show that. Yeah. So Bruno, Bruno's got a great question. Can you talk about the usage model for Rachel? Who is using it and how is it used? $500 seems like a steep price tag, so I'm not understanding the value proposition. So in most cases, Rachel is bought um, for a classroom setting. So it is a place where, you know, in a prison or in a village where you might have 50 people connecting to it at the same time. And it is a one-time cost for the device and all of its content and all of its content updates are free. So normally it's worked where you know, somewhere between 10 and 30 students are connecting to it at once, and it's used for many years, and it could be used, um, you know, 10 or 30 students through five different sessions in a day. If you're in a prison setting, you may have 150 students on it every day for many years, and so when that starts to happen, you start to notice the price tag is cheaper. 
Um, if you are thinking about using this where you are shipping it to like one learner somewhere, we would use our Rachel Pie system, which is $159. Um, or you can go to oertogo.org and you can download full websites to a USB drive and ship them out. And then the idea is a teacher would say, hey, in this resource, I want you to, you know, you could mail to them a USB stick and a piece of paper that says, watch these 13 videos and write a, you know, maybe it's TED Talk videos and write a report on the most inspirational idea that you saw in TED Talks. Um, another use case we had in a prison was when a student was transferring prisons and he had almost gotten his um, high school diploma. And so they took one of the free textbooks on Rachel, they printed it out, they mailed it to him and they said, finish this and we'll give you your last half credit. Um, so I'm gonna go through some more of the questions. Do you use Libri text? If not, can it be added? I'm sorry, I don't know what Libri text is. Um, but there are a whole host of websites you can see at OER, which stands for Open Educational Resources, the number two, and the word go.org. And you can see most of the content that we make available on Rachel right there. Can you use Rachel with an LMS like Edmentum, Canvas, or Moodle, Google Sites, Google Classroom? So Rachel includes Moodle in it. So if you were, um, like a Moodle, a Moodle course or any other LMS usually links to other parts of the internet. And it says, go watch this video and then come back and answer this question. You can do that on Rachel, but Moodle is installed on Rachel and you would only link to other resources on Rachel. So hopefully that makes sense. It, it is and has an LMS inside it already. Um, and it's Moodle, Canvas can also be installed. I'm not sure about the other learning management systems. I think the other learning management systems are for-profit or copywritten. Moodle and Canvas actually are open educational resources themselves, which is why we can install them on the device itself. So um, I don't know more about Libri text. Sorry, what kind of devices can connect to it? I'm in a jail setting, the inmates have access to Adobo tablets. Could these connect? Um, I don't know if Edovo tablets allow you to change the Wi-Fi signal that they connect to. So any tablet that you have, that you own, or any laptop that you own, which has a wireless signal on it, can connect to Rachel. So Rachel is just a wireless signal. If you have a laptop, if you have a tablet, you can connect to Rachel, you can open Chrome, and you can view all of the content. Most groups, and I think Edovo, GTL, you know, JPay, Securus, when you buy their tablet, they lock it to their own Wi-Fi signal, I think. I think Edovo may be a little more open about this, but I think in general, they, you have outsourced your entire learning management system to you know, the for-profit provider, Edovo, JPay, or you know, GTL, Securus, APDS. So I'm not sure if Edovo tablets can be changed to connect to Rachel, any other tablet, um, or any laptop which you already own, or even a cell phone, you know, with the SIM card removed could connect to Rachel and view the um, content. Rachel Pi, what is Rachel Pi? What are the specs? Rachel Pi is the Rachel system built on a Raspberry Pi computer. Um, it's, it can only host maybe three to five users at once, and it hosts a smaller amount of content. It only hosts about 64 gigabytes of content versus one terabyte or you know, 10 or 20 times the content. If you have a solid power supply, which is the case in California in most places, you can use Rachel Pi. We generally don't recommend it because unless you shut it down properly over time, it can get corrupted. So um, we really like people using Rachel Plus because it has the battery in it. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading the Q&A. It's, it's possible, and you can also build it yourself if you buy a Raspberry Pi computer. Are these questions answered in the presentation? A lot of these questions are covered in the rest of the presentation, and um, hopefully it's also being recorded, so we can go back through any of this Q&A, Connie. Um, and then the last Q&A I see, um, Penny, is from Steve about how often sites are updated. Again, most sites are not updated frequently. Um, there's at most once a year for something like Wikipedia. Whew. Okay. 
Thank you, Jerry. Okay, we have a lull. So, let, Frank, can you go back one slide and then we'll, we can get started again. Thank you, Jeremy, for jumping in on that. I appreciate it. No problem. And keep the Q&A coming if, if anyone wants to keep asking questions. We'll do that again when I catch my breath. No, this is a great tag team. And what I'm going to present to you is more of the operational within Rachel so you can understand what it can do. And then I'm also going to walk through, you know, some of the uh, websites that, you, that Jeremy talked about. OER to go where you can actually look at the content. And then I get into more of the specifics of how you look at it, how you upload, et cetera. So I'm giving you like a operational view of if you're the instructor and you purchase this uh, Rachel device and you're gonna be using it in school, this will just show you basically what it is I can do. And what I have right here is a lot of our staff wanna upload their own content. It's very easily done. You log in as the teacher, and then you're able to connect. Um, and I give you a demonstration here. I uploaded content about a training of a operating system, and it's called Endless OS. And so it's all created within the device. And as you can see in the circle, there are uploaded 12 lessons. And so Rachel allows you to bring a digital learning platform into your classroom. Again, sort of like a private, cloud of your own that students can connect to and Rachel can be either used through a wired or wireless program. So I'm just giving you a very quick summary of you know your content, your vision, and you upload it into Rachel and students can access it and the teacher can control that access also. Um, I'm showing here how it lays out in the lesson planning. Again, all of this software is within Rachel it's a very easy how-to. You can manage it, you can update it. Um, it's very simplified for a teacher to actually lay out a whole course and have it ready for distribution. Um, this is the content. It, was, it can be loaded into Rachel as a PDF or as a movie. So a teacher can put in all this different content. Again, this is a lesson that I had that's lesson one, endless OS training one, and the student would click on it, you know, create user account, and there's the content there, very easily done. Um, when you go inside of Rachel as the admin, as you saw earlier, we had all of this content there, and here you can actually see and pick and choose all of the content that you would like to be shown on your Rachel device and you can decide if you want it to be hidden, you can decide what languages, it can be in English, it can be programs in Spanish or in French. So there's, it's multilingual. You're able to choose what type of content that you would like. And we have programs going on in Guatemala, for example, where all of that content is open and shareable. A lot of youth correction facilities would also load their systems with Spanish programs for their staff and for their youth uh, that uh, want to engage in Spanish language programs. So you are able to do a choice of whatever content you like that we have available. And again, it's targeting the areas that you want, whether it's math or English or college program, you're able to find out what's relevant to your population. And if you look in the upper corner, you see the admin, you just click on the admin, you enter your password, it takes you to this internal device for handling the uploads and the administration of Rachel. So as I said earlier, you can pick and choose the content in what order you like Rachel. Here's some ones that I chose. Uh, one is how to make a Rachel module. Uh, you often have young people that are interested in Raspberry Pi, and I put that software in there. Also, MIT Scratch. We get a lot of young people that want to learn how to do coding. And so these programs are within Rachel. And in WikiHow, again, it helps young people to discover where they want to uh, fix something or how they want to do a garden or, um, you know, work in their, excuse me, work in their yard. Uh, WikiHow allows young people and adults to choose, you know, answer that question, get to know more of the basic knowledge. Um, next is the component. First, we looked at modules. Now we're looking inside of Rachel Admin for the hardware component. 
you're able to see here what is available as far as your content. And it's good to keep an eye on that if you need to, you know, slim down on Rachel or you want to put more content in, you know how much you have. You have the ability to turn the Wi-Fi on or off. And for youth of corrections, of course, when we had these running in our facilities, we always had it off. Uh, there are schools in the youth correction facilities, they would have it off and they would connect Rachel to their education server. So it actually worked as a network component in youth corrections, and we found it to be very successful to continue education, uh, especially on the living units, uh, so young people could keep learning without having you know, the infamous, oh, you cannot continue on your laptop because it requires a internet connection. With Rachel, we were able to bring it into a remote area young people could continue their reading and their research because it was all closed, it was all captured content. And, and again, this is good to see whenever you look to see what's available in your hardware and for the content that you like. Uh, the next page here, I'm gonna to talk to you about once you have your Rachel, you probably wanna make sure that you are able to update to the current system. Again, some of these uh, Rachel devices are not updated that often, depends how remote somebody is. But if you do decide to update it, you have the ability to, you can just put a RJ45 cord, a internet cord uh, into the back of Rachel, and then you can check for your update to make sure you have the most current operating system. And just click there, check for updates, and it'll say whether to update or not. It's a very simple process for updating your Rachel. The next component here that I'm going to talk about is how do you achieve the ability to get new content? And so in Rachel, if you look at that install tab there, it shows you a listing of all the newest content that's available. And that listing is also available in the OER to go if you want to look and navigate, which we will. Um, to look at what it actually feels like, what it actually can do, the software that you want to upload. So these are very short descriptors. You want to go to OER to go to look at the, you know, the content itself. And here's- We've got a, a few more Q&As I think we could just hit on real quick. Go ahead. Um, how far does the signal go, one room, one school building? So the wireless signal can go um, 150 feet it's also, if you've got classrooms in a facility, um, we've seen it go through three cement walls, um, but that's probably like a total of maybe 60 or 70 feet. So it depends on what you have blocking it. If you had a facility where you wanted the signal to extend throughout the facility or throughout the school building, um, there are easy ways to extend the wireless signal through cabling, which probably already exists. Basically, you add access points um, and you wire them all together. So as a standalone device, 150 feet, maybe through two or three concrete walls, if you think about your classroom setup, and if you need something more, you can extend the wireless signal beyond that. Um, is it conceivable that a non-administrator, a student, could upload content on the device which is not authorized by the teacher and may be inappropriate? It's certainly conceivable they would need the password, um, so you would you know, someone would have to give them the password or, you know, they would have to spend a lot of time in close proximity of the device trying to hack into it. Um, you know, it's much less conceivable. In the hundreds of devices we've had deployed, I've never seen it happen, uh, yeah. but it's, it's certainly possible. Yeah. In Oregon, we, we have these at every facility when I was working there, and we never had it hacked into. Uh, what we found is a lot of the uh, individuals, the youth themselves, respected have access and so they were very respectful and some of the sites we had the Rachel device just mounted right on the wall uh, some sites felt they needed to be more secure and they would put like a cage around it and again um, you're bringing internet or act or internet like resources to areas that never had it. and we we found a lot of the individuals having new access to be very respectful of the technology so again, this is where you upload, where you get all the new content. And here is a brief look. Again, it's a captured site here. This is OER to go. And you're actually able to 
go through Oregon, uh, I'm sorry, uh, OER to go and find areas that you would like to upload and you're able to navigate through all of this content. And these are all brought to you by different agencies that have used the content. Again, they're all within the realm of being shareable, open, uh, donated. We have all sorts of people involved in giving us content. Uh, it's across the world and it's also used across the world. And there's the Algebra to Go Saddleback College that uh, Jeremy had mentioned. And here we have a more precise look. I clicked on Algebra to Go and here it shows us where the website is, shows us where the content is, and you're able to navigate through the content of Algebra to Go just as if you were using it within the Rachel device. So you're able to get a good feel and understanding of the content before you upload it. A lot of teachers that are running programs um, now with COVID-19 are designing their own curriculum. And so they're spending a lot of time on OER to go to figure out what is the best scenario of content to run their courses using either Rachel or other offline devices. There are uh, quite a few uh, correctional facilities in the US, especially in DOC, that they actually go to OER to go and then they use that content on their education server. And again, that's provided for free. Uh, Jeremy and the, uh, had put this together, OER to go, to be shareable, to be free. There's no cost uh, on it. And again, this is a, a deeper dive showing what it looks like inside of Saddleback Mountain's content. And again, it's just, I'm just showing you sort of like a drill down if you were to go to OER to go. And all of you can, if you're on your computer, you can go to the site and check it out and to see it for yourself. Uh, another content I want to show you here is how I chose the module maker. EN means in English. And so I thought, well, let's upload something that is beneficial for everyone. How do you make a module in Rachel? And so this is a um, upload that I did. I identified it. I hit download and it went into the device. Uh, the other uh, component is called stats. After we do the install, I went to stats. What's going on? So you may be interested what sites are being hit. You may be interested in seeing how much activity is going on within the Rachel device. The stats area allows you to get into the device itself and its usage. Um, it's very helpful to know there's um, staff that use this information to share with their admin to show that, hey, we've had a number of young people having access and here's what it looks like. Uh, they then report it out to their administration and then they get further funding to find, uh, you know, resources to purchase new laptops because the Rachel's being used. And that's just one example of how stats I've seen has been used. Uh, the other end of it is, you know, should we leave these programs on the system if they're not being used and what programs are being used. Do we need to find additional programs in mathematics or reading or books and that? Uh, one thing we found is that a lot of devices that are for pay actually use a lot of the content that we have, especially in the textbook area and for the uh, Gutenberg reading areas. Some facilities actually have devices that they must purchase. Here we offer it for free. And so that's that stats area that gives you that stats. Uh, next is the settings. Again, if you update your password, uh, as Jeremy mentioned before, and as somebody had questioned, what happens if somebody gets hold of a password? Well, you can also go in and update that password. And the next one is log out, allows you to leave the system itself, and you're able to get out when you need to leave. Um, the other component I want to mention here is if you are using Rachel and you're looking at refurbishing computers to connect to it, um, we've used a lot of the endless OS and corrections. Uh, reason being, it's also created for offline use. Uh, endless OS has a lot of applications, over 100 apps in it. And so we also like using this in the correctionals field. So if you have a handful of laptops or old desktops that you want to convert 
Um, I just thought I'd throw this in there and make a recommendation of using the, the endless OS. Uh, in corrections, we also put some of the Rachel content uh, into the device so young people can get Rachel either through the uh, device itself or they get the Rachel content uh, that's residing within the laptop itself. So the best thing I think about Rachel is the content, its use and flexibility for creating your, your own uh, content in itself. And I think in Oregon, I can say that we've used these statewide and so we've had the ability of extending education to areas that never had access before. So if you can imagine that students at one time only were allowed to have access to computers during school time for a few hours, suddenly the Rachel server got introduced to correctional facilities and then they were placed in areas like a automotive shop where they put the curriculum on it they got exposed to a learning resource center where they ran college classes in the evening. They got extended to living units so young people could read and do research on the weekends uh, in the later evening. So it expanded the world for us. And I, I cannot speak enough about the ability of changing a learning environment, whether you're in a remote area of the world or in a correctional facility or even possibly a, a farming community or migrant camp, uh, you know, a, a refugee settlement area. Offline is a low cost way of bringing in content. And the other end of it is Rachel also allows the teacher to bring in their own content, their own resources that are shareable. Um, and so we had, um Frank, we have one more Q&A. Um, is there English to English language learners or to teach foreign languages? So this is where we've been spending a lot of time over the last year. It's pretty high in demand. Um, the only resources we have right now for that is, um, I'm pasting it into the Q&A. There's a website called languagetransfer.org, which we just um, started translating into Rachel, not translating the language, but we have to make a copy of the site and that takes some time. And then we also um, have fantasticphonics.org, which is a great um, English language learning site. It's produced by um, the Australian government with some support from USAID, which has two English um, literacy programs. One is for children learning basic literacy, you know, the letter A in the word cat, all the way up to making paragraphs. But the other is for adult learners to learn English language for vocational use and so it'll go through four or five different job types and help them understand just the basics to English language um, as it relates to I think healthcare industries um, like home health care and a few other businesses that we've seen people use but nothing like Duolingo or any of these great you know pure English language learning websites so language transfer.org and then fantastic phonics um, I, let me look up what their website is and I'll put that in the chat as well We've been doing also research on um, Vote Tech. We get a lot of requests for welding and open education resources uh, that actually apply to some of the more of the technical areas. And I've been learning more about that uh, with some of the programs in Canada. Uh, they have a lot of pro, um, shareable programs uh, for welding. And so we're trying to also expand on that, especially in areas that are remote. Uh, so the Canadians are doing a lot of research in there, up near Can uh, Victoria, that is. And so that's also been very helpful. Um, Steve asks, how often is the device updated with newer tech? So the device hardware is not updated very often, usually about every three or four years. This is our third version. We've been doing this for about 10 years. Um, we don't have a new device in development right now. There is a existing 90 day warranty and the option to purchase a three or two year warranty when you go to store.worldpossible.org. Uh, the next question from Rebecca, the device would need to be in a physical location that students can access, correct? Correct, that is correct. Students wouldn't be able to access from home, for example, if they are more than 150 feet from the device. That is also correct. They would have to take the device with them um, or a smaller version of the device. Uh, Sarah asks for corrections. Please explain the use of Moodle during instructional staff lockouts. Can users upload assignments 
Um, yes, users could upload assignments. How would remote teachers check their homework, give feedback, and provide new assignments? So you would have to um, work with you know, staff that is still on site. So sometimes we have this like facilitator role who's not a teacher, but has access to the device and then also access to email or the internet. And they can go in as the administrator on Moodle and um, pass along that homework or feedback, but it's, it's obviously not an ideal process. Um, and then does the device need to be connected to the web for a block of time for this? If you did connect Rachel to the internet, you could access it remotely. Um, we would have to kind of work with the IT staff at a correctional facility. When um, you connect Rachel to the internet, it has to be allowed to get on the internet. There could be a firewall or something that blocks it but it is technically possible to do, Sarah. Um, if you have more questions, please just pump them back in the Q&A. If we already have licenses, for example, Odysseyware, can we upload classes to the Rachel? Um, this, this area of law is not like very well articulated. I would um, encourage you to reach out to Odysseyware and explain to them what you're doing. They actually know about Rachel. Um, I haven't followed up with groups who've tried to do this to see what the outcome was, but you know there is there is some legal basis that would say under fair use law, if people don't have access to this um, resource given what's going on right now or a lack of connectivity or you're already paying for a license and it's the same student, that you should be protected under fair use law. But I would just recommend you reach out to Odysseyware and tell them what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, Greg, and that's that is correctional facilities that we um, work with. We really only in the United States work with correctional facilities. So uh, happy to help that. What's the website for Fantastic Phonics? And that's teach the world to read, uh, I think dot com. Teach the world to read dot com. So that's um, everything I've got. Penny or Frank? Um Pretty much what, what we're doing. I, again, I, I cannot overemphasize the ability to uh, bring in your own content and also to, you know, expand learning into areas where, you know, where it was not possible. And so I, I think I can only speak from experience. And uh, Oregon continues to use it. We have several sites uh, within the United States, uh, you know, transition houses, uh, DOC facilities that have been using Rachel. Uh, Wisconsin has been a, a huge user of Rachel for their higher education. So there are, depending on your IT staff, a lot of possibilities that you can jump into to expand education resources. And the best thing with COVID is that uh, there's been a lot of issues with the physical books themselves and paper themselves and then also reaching out to students without having direct contact with staff. Um, the digital means, again, it's not always, I, I do prefer person to person, but a lot of digital resources are helping to keep you know, the spread of COVID down. And so I, I yeah. do believe that these resources um, help to create a safer environment in prisons and in youth correctional facilities. And it's- um, and so someone asked if there's a contact person of someone who is using Rachel at a correctional facility to talk to. We've got dozens. So if you reach out to us and tell us where you're working, um, we're more than happy to connect you with a few. Uh, we probably didn't do great introductions. Frank spent over 20 years at the Oregon Youth Authority um, deploying Rachel to all of their cottages. And you know we've got hundreds more that we're happy to connect you to. And the last thing I'll say, and it's, um, you know, personally, I went out and found some um, money to create a laptop for corrections. And so in our COVID response in the state of Washington, um, we went out and we built a laptop that is for corrections. It's called justicetechsolutions.com. And you can just buy these laptops. They are made specifically for corrections in that they don't have any USB ports. They don't have any Wi-Fi. Um, they're clear. There's no metal inside them. And um, we've been deploying those through uh, Washington State and Wisconsin at their DOCs. And that's what they use in conjunction with Rachel. Um, unlike something like Edovo, you just buy the machine and it's yours and you don't have to worry about all of their um, software restrictions and things like that. Um, Barbara asked in the Q&A, you mentioned batteries. Do all devices have batteries? Does each user need to purchase 
their own batteries. Um, all the devices have batteries. If you're not going to use the battery, it's, it's not the best idea to keep a battery in the device. Um, so if you're in a correctional facility and you've got good solid power and you don't need a battery, when you go to our website to purchase, you can actually ask that we remove the battery. But otherwise, the um, battery is installed by the, in the device by default. Um, and so each device can have a battery or cannot have a battery, depending on what you want. And uh, Frank and Jeremy, can I just add that, uh, I don't know, it wasn't in the slide deck, but um, I've always really appreciated your communicativeness as well as providing materials and um, training for what this device does. And including you have a pretty robust YouTube channel where you walk people through how to use this device, how to update it, et cetera. So we're, it's not just a matter that uh, Jeremy and, and Frank just kind of send this out and you're left to fend on your own. Um, they do provide a really great set of um, tools and resources to help you get going. Of course, I always recommend that you get very friendly with your IT people <laughs> yeah. and uh, they, can they can help you. And as long as they understand how this device works, um, it is something that is, it's not restricted to corrections. It is just an elegant solution for corrections. And I've seen use cases in our, our uh, local jail programs. I have another one that's up in the high Sierras that is looking to use these Rachel devices to take out to some of the big ranches to train individuals. And this is more along the lines of what uh, Frank was talking about before about some career tech ed um, of trying to, in this particular case, it's teaching the ranch workers how to repair the ranch equipment that they happen to be continually breaking. But um, uh, so there, there's really some very creative ways that this can be used um, outside of corrections. And I think it's, it takes those teachers, because this is where it comes from, teachers who learn about this all of a sudden go, hey, wait a minute, you know, I could, I could send this out via mail to, you know, um, a, a migrant workers camp. And, you know, it can be a place where they can start to learn more about English or start to learn and, and start earning, you know, um, more knowledge toward their high school completion. It, it, it has so much potential um, that I think adult education needs to, I'm getting on my soapbox here, Jeremy, so do you understand this? Adult education can really take this device and use it um, even if you might have internet connection, it might not be the best internet connection. And you may be in a situation where your school program, um, your adult ed program is, a, is at the local, you know, shopping mall or the basement of a church. And this device can at least bring that information to the learners. They can access it. Not only are they learning the content you're providing, but they're now also learning some critical digital literacy skills as well. So it, it does so much. And I think that, you know, I just wanted to pitch that because um, I know Jeremy and Frank are very much into the details. And I want everybody to take that big step backwards because this is a worldwide organization and they are reaching learners in such remote areas. And I'm always just fascinated with the great work that they've done. Thank you, Penny. And we've got some more Q&A. Let me get through real quick. Okay. Um, Amy, so you only work with correctional facilities in the U.S.? No. Um, one, you know, we don't do a lot of hand-holding work with the correctional facilities. We provide this technology. Frank will provide training. And we don't care where they are. We, we have Rachel in um, prisons in central Bolivia. We've got them in Canada. Uh, there's some in Finland. There are a lot of Rachel devices in international correctional settings as well. Um, Maggie asks, is there a way that um, we can be updated as to the content that will be made available in the future via Rachel? If you go to worldpossible.org, you can sign up for our newsletter there. And um, in our newsletter, which doesn't go out very frequently, maybe once a quarter, we will update folks with new content that has been added. Sarah asks, are there teachers in corrections currently commuting with their students remotely successfully? When a deputy gets the device through the jail firewall, can all the teachers log into it to see and update the assignments? Sarah, yes, but this is like a, that is a very complicated um, use case. It's rare. And like in the state of Wisconsin, we have uh, Rachel's in about 30 correctional facilities. All 30 of the Rachel devices are then networked to central office. 
and central office manages who has and what type of access each um, individual can get to their Rachel device. So does it happen? Yes. Does it happen frequently? No. The vast majority of our devices are just used in a classroom with a teacher physically in that classroom, but it's certainly possible. Um, but we require that handshake, as Penny says, with your IT folks. Um, Barbara asks, how large is the screen? So Barbara, the, um, we don't deal with what we call the client device, meaning anyone, any desktop or laptop or tablet can connect to Rachel, but we don't sell those desktops, laptops, or tablets. We just sell Rachel. It's kind of like the brain to your computer lab, but you would need a tablet or an old cell phone or a, you know, some sort of device to connect to Rachel to access all the content which is on Rachel. Can you name a specific corrections facility that uses Rachel if we wanted to reach out to them for questions? Um, sure, we've got quite a few, you know, as Penny mentions, the Sacramento County Office of Education has one of these set up. And then, um, Frank, I wanted to, to, there's a jail in Northern California, I'm blanking on her name, but she's been a great resource for people in California. Um, and then all of the California CDCR has um, Rachel devices for their youth correctional facilities as well. Is this just the California group, Penny? Yes. Um, well, I sh I'm going to say yes, tentatively. We have invited others um, who learn about our um, our webinars so we can have folks from out of state. And honestly, I didn't look at the attendance beforehand, Jeremy. We sure. have had other folks from out of state, but it's the minority. Sure. So, uh, you know, Maricopa County, who I think actually came to us through a previous OTAN webinar, has 13 Rachels in all of their youth correctional facilities. Yeah. Oregon has them in every, the Oregon Youth Authority has them in every facility. Um, the state of Wisconsin, the adult DOC has them in every facility. And then there are a whole host of smaller facilities that um, it would probably make more sense for me to find out who bought them and who's actually using them and, and connect you to. But um, Lisa, if you, if you want to send me an email, I can put together a list of people who are happy to respond to. Oh, uh, Frank, do you remember Julie? I can't think of her name, but she was in a Northern California. She did a few webinars on this thing. Uh, Julie Schultz. Yeah, I had, I have to look at my records. I... Yes, she's up in Nevada County, the jail program. Sure. I worked with yep. Julie okay. and um, she presented and she was really a great use case because Julie considered herself a technophobe. And huh. once introduced to this device, she was like, oh my God, this is so easy. And yeah. she was uploading, downloading modules and, and uh, pff, great stuff. And um, all of her learners were in the jail system and they were using it. And Frank, it, it also was very much a case of they understood this was a privilege. They were very mm -hmm. respectful. And, you know, she was in a situation where she couldn't bring in paper and pencils into this um, environment. So this device, um, it took a lot of convincing, but it was really, um, once she was in, I think they had some really great results from it. Yeah, it was actually, it was Julie Coffin at Nevada That's right. Union High School District. Yeah. That's right. Nevada County Jail, Wayne yeah. Brown Correctional Facility. Um, but she was great for a while too. Yeah, we, we started to see recently that a lot of contraband was coming into books and some states are saying it was moving them more towards technology than the books. And then we also learned uh, with young people, especially that they preferred not going to the library. They wanted a device where they could check out books and reading material very easily and decide whether or not they want to read it in a click. And that was an aha moment for me was the new generation of being used to digital content and getting into a digital way of reading and saving or pursuing books later or coming back to a book rather than having to physically go to the library. And so um, part of this is a generation change too of technology and learning. Bruno asks, can modules created on Canvas be ported to Rachel? I know Moodle modules can be. Um, I'm less familiar with Canvas, but if you can export Canvas modules, then you could import them to Rachel. The big caution is, is, is if your Canvas module is linking to things on YouTube or to other resources. A lot of people, when they build a site in Canvas or a class in Canvas, are saying, go view this website over here as part of the learning. That website won't be available unless it's already installed on Rachel. Um, Joan asks if we can use Rachel with Zoom. 
So unfortunately, no, just to be really clear, there's no internet connectivity with Rachel. You are only getting copies of websites as they once existed. There's no sort of chat or Zoom or anything like that. And that's you know also a nice benefit in corrections is no one can get outside Rachel. It works, you know, it would work at the bottom of the ocean um, in a submarine. You would only be able to connect to the content that's already been pre-installed on the device and you're not gonna be using any sort of video chat or thing like that.